Alright, so the next thing we're going to do, um, since we have gotten all of our framework in, is we are going to put in the cross bracing, which you can see in this image right here. So one, two, three, four cross braces. So we've been working overall um, hosting things to levels, right? So that's been on a horizontal plane and oftentimes when you're hosting things to levels you just go to that level and create it and it hosts it to that level. Now we want to put some cross braces in between these columns here. And that's not a horizontal level but a vertical level. And so a vertical level is basically, if I go to level 2, so here is that line that we want to place the vertical braces on and basically we're going to place it on a grid line which is 5. And so these can act like construction levels. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our south elevation. Whoops. Let's go ahead and close that. Zoom in. Go to our south elevation here. <clears throat> and we're going to go to create a brace. So if I go to hidden line. Let's cancel that. Or actually wireframe is better so we can see the beam below. We're going to go to structure and we're going to go to brace right here which is going to allow us to draw a brace. If I select brace the first thing that comes up is which work plane would you like to work on? So they call it a work plane and not a level. The level are the horizontal ones. If we have a grid line we can come into the name area, go to the pull down and pick that grid and it will use that grid as a vertical reference plane. And I'm going to click OK here and I'm going to say I want my brace to be the 20, 260 by 80 which is the same as the columns and I'm going to zoom in on this second bay and I'm going to left click about 300 units away, 300 millimeters away and then I'm going to draw down about right there and left click and it's going to give me a cross brace and so I'm going to go to modify to stop that command and we can do a similar thing with this that we did with these we can cope it because it's giving me that offset, right? So I can pick this item, pull it into the, <clears throat> the beam above. I can also pick this one and pull it down below the beam. And then I can cope it just like I coped <clears throat> the joist. So if I go to cope, I can say I want to cut this with that. And then I can do the same thing, cut this with that. And then stopping the coping command over here by selecting modify, I can pick that item and I can set the coping distance to zero. Okay. For those of you that are familiar with global parameters, you can also set a global parameter that con controls this offset. And once I do that, I can pick and mirror. So I'm going to pick the mirror pick axis. And since I know that this joist is right in the middle, I can pick the center of it and it will mirror that guy around and then I just need to recope that guy. Right? And so now if I go to my 3D view, I have cross braces. Oh, and they're wide flanges. And we don't want them to be wide flanges, so we want them to be the same as the columns. So let's see if we have that option. We have the double, to, that's what we want it to be, right? So I just flipped them out for the columns and there they are. And now what you would do is you could go back to your south elevation, select these two and copy them using multiple, pick your grid line and just copy them through until you have those done. And unfortunately you have to go through and cope each one. So there is some work involved, but it's not overly awful, right? So it'll take a little picking, but it shouldn't take too long to get these guys. Whoops, just did that one backwards. So I'll go ahead and undo that and recope it.
and if I go to my 3D view, there it is. All right, so we have those cross braces in. Um, <clears throat> So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a roof and put a fascia on that roof, like a steel fascia on there. 